So let's look at some of the common problems and faults that you get with the Volkswagen Audi Group 2 litre TDI engine. Now we're not saying these are unreliable engines. If you compare them to other engines from other manufacturers, they are perfectly serviceable, but it's handy knowing where the weak spots are because with this little bit of knowledge, you can mitigate the problems and keep an eye out for them. So first up, we've got issues with the injectors that they use. So the Siemens injectors typically installed on the 170 horsepower versions of the TDI engine from Volkswagen um, often had injector problems. Now that was an early problem and there was a bad batch. They've been sorted out now. So if you're buying a car now, it's very unlikely to have these injector problems just because of the length of time it's been since that bad run that they had. It's all been sorted out. So don't worry too much about the the injector issues but if you are getting misfiring do get the injectors checked because it is a distinct possibility that there could be some problem going on there so carbon build up in the head when they went to euro four five and six emissions there was a need for manufacturers to tighten up the emissions that their cars were putting out and one way of doing this was using direct injection so the fuel is injected directly into the cylinder now it's probably a bigger problem in a petrol engine than a diesel engine but the two litre t TDIs did suffer from this. They had an exhaust gas recirculation valve that tended to dump air from the engine which contained oil particles onto the intake and that would cause this carbon buildup to happen. So it's going to happen. The higher the mileage gets, the more likely it is that those intake valves are starting to get sooted up and clogged up. So if you feel there's a loss of power there, get them cleaned. Because it's such a common problem and so many direct injection cars suffer from this, there's various cleaning methods from walnut blasts to sprays that you can put through the intake that actually clean off the carbon very very effectively and I would consider that as something that should be done every 20 to 40 thousand miles so it depends on how you use the car as well lots of short journeys tend to be worse for carbon build up than lots of nice long journeys um, long journeys warm the engine up and keep everything running efficiently so you can look after your engine just by making sure you avoid those short journeys and running the engine on coal. We've also got the dreaded problem of the diesel particulate filter. And again, that's common on most cars that have diesel particulate filters. If you only do short journeys, the particles get clogged up in that particulate filter. So it sucks out all of the certain particles that would otherwise go out of the exhaust into the atmosphere and it traps them there so they can be burned off. But the particulate filter needs to get warm enough for that burning process to take place. So if you only ever do short journeys, you're only ever going to be clogging that filter up. So one of the typical problems that we see with particulate filters is just through drivers doing short journeys. So in my experience, it was only really the 170s that had the DPF filters until we get to the Euro 6 standard. So just avoid the problem completely by giving it a spirited drive, making sure the engine gets up to temperature. I would probably criticize Audi a little bit because the DPF filter is quite a way away from the engine. So other manufacturers have cited them quite close so the air coming out of the engine is much hotter it hasn't had any chance to cool down within the exhaust but if you look after it and drive it properly you shouldn't get any problems at all with your um, with your diesel particulate filter so there was a fan controller issue so the fan obviously cools the engine down by pulling air through the radiator and the issue meant that the fan would stay on and if the fan is on all the time that fan will eventually burn out and stop working so for most journeys you'll probably get away with it but in the height of summer, if you're stuck in traffic and you haven't got a fan pulling fresh air through the radiator, you've had it, your engine is going to overheat. And these two litre TDI engines do not like being too hot. So I noted as well that the two litre TDI engine tended to have a slightly lumpy idle. That's quite normal. It's a diesel engine. It's the way they've been built and put together. So you've got lots of torque, lots of power, good fuel economy, but it is slightly lumpy on tick over. If that becomes excessive though, it is probably the dual mass flywheel starting to break down so the dual mass flywheel has two faces and they're connected by springs so as they rotate and there's vibrations from the engine it actually smooths out those rotations and keeps everything running nicely and really for that reason I would not recommend that you fit a single mass flywheel to these two litre TDI engines it will just vibrate like crazy you will not enjoy it I've heard from lots of people who've had this mod done and they've really not got on with it so 
So always replace that dual mass flywheel with another dual mass flywheel. You might get away with going a little bit lighter, but you do need the dual mass flywheel to just break up some of the vibrations coming out of the engine because it's your gearbox that's going to take the hit initially from all those excessive vibrations and that becomes quite a costly replacement. So on some of the early engines, particularly the BKP, you, you had a problem with the balancing shaft and chain tensioners which drive the oil pump. So when this breaks, it stops the oil pump from working. That will cause catastrophic problems within your engine if it's not circulating oil around. So the Volkswagen Audi group have replaced the chain system with a gear system which seem to work quite well um, for, the, for the most part. So as later engines come out they often engineer out these early problems. So I would always avoid buying a first generation engine and just wait for them to iron out the problems that come along. So if you're driving along and you notice a sudden drop in oil pressure shut off the engine don't try and limp home with your oil light on make sure that you get that car sorted and get that problem addressed because that is really expensive when it happens and goes wrong so we've got a few more issues that are around that area on our website and the web page that we've got is always updated so as fresh issues come to light see with these videos I can just put the video out I can't add bits to a video once it's launched so do whiz by our site and just check for the very very latest information on the 2 litre TDI engine. Another big problem that happened on the early 2 litre TDI engines is cracking on the cylinder head. So if you check the code on the cylinder head, it's behind the fuel lines to the right of the engine and there's a little number that ends with a letter. So if you've got an A, you're pretty much guaranteed at some point, if you haven't already, to suffer from a cracked cylinder head. The Bs were somewhat stronger, but most of those end up with cracked cylinder heads. And the Cs are pretty strong. They will still crack occasionally. You, you expect a problem with every engine that comes out, but the Cs are much, much stronger, much tougher and you're much less likely to have a problem with the cylinder head cracking. This issue doesn't seem to crop up with the EA288 units that came out a little bit later. So stay tuned to the channel. We've got a bit more information coming up on the 2 litre TDI, particularly looking at some tuning mods for it and some upgrades that you can do to just make the engine a lot better. And I had one in my Audi A3, a 2 litre TDI. It was the BKD version. So I've had quite a bit of experience in what works on that and what doesn't work on that. So I'll be passing on those tips in a future video so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already drop us a like and see you in the next video thanks for watching